I recently put a poll out in my private Facebook coaching community. There's over 10,000 agents and I asked them a question. I said, if you could only use one word, what word would you describe that is getting in your way of reaching your fullest potential? And by far, the word was consistency. And you see, one of the best books I've ever read, probably my favorite book of all time is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And the question that I asked my team is I said, perhaps it could help if someone actually did the math, if they actually said, okay, if consistency is my number one problem in real estate, that's my biggest issue. Sometimes I do things, sometimes I don't, but I just, I'm not consistent. If they can actually see that play out and they can actually look and understand what's happening if they decide to be consistent, would that change anything? Well, that's exactly what we've done in this video. We've done something I think that you're going to find a ton of value in. And so let's jump into it. So the, the idea of the compound effect, the big idea is that small changes over time result in massive results. Now, you might say, yep, I get it. I conceptualize it. I'm totally with you. However, most of us have these big goals. We know that. But the problem, of course, is that most of us try to take these big leaps towards the goal in order to accomplish the goal in as little as time as possible. So rather than taking small steps forward that amount over time, compound and result in massive results, we do the exact opposite. So let me show you what this looks like in practical terms. I'm going to show you how the 1%, the most elite, the top real estate agents in our industry actually do it. First, let's look at what we're calling the setup. So let's pretend there's an agent and she starts out with something super, super easy to accomplish. She starts out by simply prospecting for just 30 minutes a day and only talking with five prospects a day every day, five days a week. You agree that's pretty tangible, that's pretty reasonable. Then every week for 48 weeks, she adds just one conversation a day, just one. Week one, she'd have five conversations a day. Week two, she would have six conversations a day and so on and so forth. And so that's what we wanted to see is if this concept of the compound effect, what would that look like for a real estate agent in practical terms? So the next thing, let's look at and break down contacts. So at the end of the year, the agent that would just get a little tiny bit better, just one more conversation a day, just one. We're not talking about anything crazy here. Just one more conversation at the end of the year, she would have had 13 16,680 conversations. And so it's massive to see just one more conversation per week ends up to having a lot of conversations about real estate. Now, let's pretend she broke those conversations up into this type of contact distribution. Because often I get questions, well, who, 13,000 people, who would I even call? Who would I even talk to? Well, let's just say the contact distribution broke down like this as an example. 20% from expired listings, 20% from for sale by owners, 20% from downsizers, 20% from absentee owners, and 20% from her past clients or centers of influence. When you do the math on that, you say, well, that's actually pretty reasonable. That's actually pretty doable. So let's break down what happens if an agent takes these small steps every day over the course of a year. When we look at leads generated, let's also assume for argument's sake that this agent, her skill level was less than average. So we have average producers, we have above average producers. Let's also assume, because I don't want somebody in this video to say, well, yeah, if you have great skills, no, no, no. We're talking about an agent who has less than average skills. So on average, when we talk about leads generated, most agents can have a 10% contact to lead generated ratio, most. In this example, let's pretend that agent, again, is less than average. Let's call it 7%. She would 
have generated 957 seller leads in her pipeline. And leads by definition means that the person has clear motivation to sell the house. They have clear timelines when they want to sell the house. They're not obligated to another real estate agent. They give the agent permission to follow up. Not only permission, they tell them when to follow up. And then they give the agent a valid email address. That is how we're defining a lead. And in this case, the agent generates 957 leads. Next, let's look at appointments set. Just by having one more conversation a day, she was able to generate 957 leads. And now let's Let's talk about the number of appointments set. On average, agents can set 25% of their leads turn into actual appointments set. In this example, let's again assume she's less than average. Call it 15%. This means she would have set 144 listing appointments over the course of a year. When we look at appointments met, the average agent can convert 70% of the appointments that they set into an actual face-to-face -face appointment. This agent, less than average, call it 50%. Half the time she sets an appointment, it does not happen. In this example, she would have gone on 72 appointments, 72 listing appointments over the course of a year. My question for you, my challenge for you is how many listing appointments have you been on this year? We're not talking about anything crazy. We're talking about small, almost insignificant changes. She's having one more conversation per day over the course of a week, and she's adding one contact a day. Now, when we look at how many listings would she get, the average agent converting about 70% of their appointments into an actual listing taken. This agent is converting only 50% of her appointments that she goes on into actual clients. It's her closing rate. So if she went on 72 appointments, it would result in her taking 36 listings over the course of a year, three listings a month. When we look at listings sold, the average agent sells about 80% of their listings that they take. This agent converting less than average, 70% ends up selling 25 houses in a year. And then when we look at commission earned, the average agent is getting a 3% commission on their side, the listing agent side. In this example, this agent is less than average. So let's pretend she only got 2.5% commission on average. The average home price of $375,000, which ends up being $9,375 per transaction, she would end up making $235,000 a year. My challenge, my question for you is, are you earning a quarter million dollars a year? And the whole point of this video was to show you that this business is, although not easy, it's simple. The question is, are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to have conversations every day and increase your output every day. Nothing crazy. We're talking about the compound effect, starting off very, very small with something that you could do with ease. And then over a long period of time, adding small incremental changes. What I've shown you today is very, very possible. I've outlined conversions that are less than average. With the agents that I coach, I didn't say best conversion. This was lower than average conversion ratios. And you can still see how successful an agent can be. This is why I always say success or failure in real estate is a choice.